Why is it that some game or book adaptations become so successful and sometimes fans love them even more than the source material, while others struggle to make an impact and even the most loyal fans turn to look away and just forget all about it? Welcome back to another video fellas and today I will explain to you what are the ingredients for a successful TV or film adaptation in my opinion. So without any further delay, are you ready? Let's get started! Number 1. Source Material First things first, the main ingredient to make any TV or film adaptation successful is to make a meticulous search and analysis of the book or the game you want to adapt. You simply can't have a successful story that is based on some popular source material without knowing the lore yourself in the first place. In simple words, if you want your adaptation to be successful, you have to make sure you know every little detail of the book or game that you're adapting so as to not miss any important elements. For example, Peter Jackson and his team always stated that they were massive Tolkien fans and that's why they deeply respected every single detail that they could derive from the books. Now sure enough, in books, you have infinite space and time to build characters and describe worlds, so when it comes to film or TV, it makes sense that some stuff have to be changed or skipped in order for the adaptation to work. Which brings me to the next point, writing. No matter how popular is the book or game, let's say, that you are going to adapt, no matter how good the actors you cast, it will only work if the writing is good. It is highly important that the writers respect deeply the source material and the lore surrounding the adaptation. Because remember, it is a freaking adaptation! If you want to be original and pour in your own thoughts, then you should go and create your own original work. Take for instance Game of Thrones. Sure enough, George Martin's world was amazing, but it was an incredible writing team that brought the lines and the dialogue. Same case with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. The writing team made sure to pay massive respect to the writing of the author, while also deciding which elements would simply not fit on the screen. Exactly how the Last of Us team did it. They kept every single thing they could similar to the game, and only changed some details, for example, how the fungus spreads, in order to make it more appealing to the audience. Which brings me to the next point, fun base. Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough. If you're adapting a book or a game, let's say like The Last of Us, the main reason you do the adaptation is because the source material that the adaptation is based on is popular. And what makes the source popular? It's fan base and audience. You just gotta remember and think about the audience all the time. After all, it is them who you're making the adaptation for. With that said, the popular source material has a massive fan base, whether that is Middle Earth, The Witcher or God of War, you name it. And so 80% of the viewership will eventually come from that same fan base. So you gotta make sure that you give your existing audience what they want first. How do you do that? By paying respect to the source material! If I watch Lord of the Rings, it's because I wanna see Frodo take the ring to Mordor, and see elves and orcs and so on. If I watch The Witcher, it's because I wanna see Geralt slay monsters, and because I want to see in the screen what I read in the books, or at least something close to it. I don't want to see an original storyline that the writers or showrunners invented that simply takes part in the world I'm interested in. And this leads to the next point, the storyline. The important part of any great world is its story. The Last of Us, The Hobbit, Game of Thrones, The Witcher have all gathered enormous fan bases around the world because at the end of the day, they have a great storyline. So, when you plan on adapting an existing source material, you gotta make sure that at least 90%, let's say, of the storyline will be the same or at least similar to the one you're adapting from. Also, you gotta make sure that any new elements that you add do not interfere or change the original storyline for good. For example, the Last of Us TV series begins with a small scientific discussion which cleverly explains how the infection outbreak started and this small scene adds so much to the existing material that you will see later on. Or for example, in Lord of the Rings The Fellows of the Ring, some fans do not know that Frodo was waiting for 17 years in the Shire after he found the ring, before he eventually started his journey. In the films, it seems that Frodo sets out for Rivendell shortly after he receives the ring, but could that 17 year period give or add anything to the film? No, it could simply just make it longer and difficult to explain to the audience. And so this is another genius example on how to add or cut elements from the source material that will not negatively affect the storyline, because after all, the core storyline is still the same. And that leads to the final point, don't diverge from the world. Take The Witcher for example, the second season of the show shows Ciri becoming possessed in Kaira Moran and Eskiel mutating into a lesion. 
Now, I'm not necessarily saying that it's bad to add your own thoughts or ideas in the show, but do not do so in the expense of the original story and the world. Because after all, the original story and the world is what the existing fan base wants to see. If you are looking to please everyone in the world by making a story diverse or different from the source material, then again, I think it's best to create your own original story. Because, think about it, at the end of the day, someone who has never read or played The Witcher, or someone who has never played The Last of Us, for instance, it is up to chance if they would like it or not. And so, by keeping the storyline close to the source material, you make sure that the existing fan base will be satisfied. And after all, I'll say that again, they will be about 80% of the viewership anyway. And as for the rest of the audience, who knows if they're gonna like it or not in this political correctness world we live in. And so, all in all, if I leave you with anything, it's this. The main thing to remember when adapting from an existing, popular source material is to make sure every single person working on this adaptation deeply respects the source material. Take this horse rider, for example. When filming this scene, Peter Jackson made sure to put in the front line all the extras that knew what the fight was all about and leave those uninterested in Middle Earth in the back. And so you can see this supporting actor galloping with passion for the fight of his life. And this is only a tiny detail, but it goes to show the results you get when you are passionate about the source material. And to close, I am not saying do not add your own unique elements or do not change parts of the story to make it fit into a film or a TV show. Just don't do it in the expense of the source material's integrity. And that's it. This is my opinion on why some adaptations work and some don't. What is your favorite TV or film adaptation, fellas? Let me know in the comments below. Dungeons and Dragons, God of War and Warhammer are some of the upcoming adaptations that I'm really looking forward to see. As always, don't forget to respect the source material! Oh, and uh, like and subscribe. Till the next one, have an amazing time and I'll see you all later! That's what I personally think. Like, who cares? <laughs>